What's up, you math maniacs? This is Mr. Bergman here coming to you with section 5.2.2, solving polynomial equations with u substitution. So we're going to continue what we did with the last class, last assignment, last video, except there's this fourth technique that is just going to blow your mind so much we wanted to save it for its own video. Check it out. So let's review what we've been doing. We've been, um, we've been splitting the middle, as you can see here. What times itself... Uh, Let's see, what two, what two numbers that multiply up to 7 also add up to 8? It's 7 and 1. So you can split it up into two different parts, and you get b plus 7 is equal to 0, or b plus 1 is equal to 0. And so therefore, the two solutions are negative 7 or negative 1. And you can put them in a solution set if you want. Over here, what two numbers uh, multiply up to negative 10 and also add up to negative 9? Oh, it's minus 10 and plus 1. So z minus 10 is equal to 0, or z plus 1 is equal to 0. So you can say z could equal 10, or z could equal negative 1. Again, if you really want to, you can write them in a solution set. I don't think I did there. Oh, look at this. We've got a perfect square here. We've got a perfect square here. And we multiply them two together and double it. You get the middle term. So therefore, I can choose a to equal y. That's the square root of y squared. Uh, b to equal 9. That's the square root of 81. And so we get a, a plus b squared. That's a formula, perfect square trinomial. And if we take the square root of both sides, we get, technically, you get plus or minus 0. Uh, y, y plus 9 is equal to plus or minus 0, but plus or minus 0 are the same, the same idea, folks. So we can subtract 9 and get y is equal to negative 9, the only solution to that equation. So, u substitution. It's also known as writing in quadratic form. This is actually a technique that's used a ton in calculus. And so, they, you know, over the years, people just keep on introducing this. Uh, younger, uh, like lower and lower, and I'm really happy to show it to you now. So let's get used to it so that by uh, two years from now, um, it'll be a breeze. So here's what we see. We see x to the fourth minus 13x squared plus 36 equals zero. And so the indicators that I'm looking at are, well, this kind of looks like something that you could, you know, put a, apply to the quadratic formula or something out of chapter three, where we could split the difference. Except the the exponents are twice as high as I need as uh, I'm expecting. So if you want to, you can if you get used to exactly how this goes. I'm going to let u is equal to x squared because I see an x squared here, and I'm, and then if I square th both of these terms, this, this equation, I get u squared is equal to x to the fourth. Like, once I make this one choice, this really well-chosen um, choice of u equals x squared, then, of course, u squared is going to be equal to this side squared as well. And so what I see is this x squared is here, and this x to the fourth is here, and I can actually substitute this equation. I can rewrite it with no longer as x's, but as with u's. And so that basically brings the, these enormously high exponents back down to a manageable level that I remember in Chapter 3. I'm rewriting a chapter 5 equation as a chapter 3 equation. This is something now that I can use quadratics or split the middle or um, uh, formulas on and when it's add now that it's written as a u. So we've got, um, oh, 36. What two numbers um, multiply up to uh, 36 and also add up to minus 13? It would be minus 4 and minus 9. And so splitting, so that's how we split the middle on that. And so then u is equal to 4, or u equals 9. Uh, now, uh, you might, uh, there's, there's another new part. Uh, once we get u is equal to 4, u equals 9, we're actually not finished. We actually, we were started with an x, we got to end with an x. And we can't just end at uh, u equals 4 or u equals 9. So we're going to back substitute. It's really important to write this step out because now we, we understand what we have to do. If u is equal to x squared, then we're going to rewrite this as x squared is equal to 4. And if u is equal to x squared, then we can write this part as x squared is equal to 9. And so now we've got two different equations that we can solve independently of themselves. We take the square root of both sides, we get x is equal to plus or minus 2. And take the square root of both sides here, we get x is equal to plus or minus 3. There's actually four different uh, numbers that are going to solve this original equation. They are plus or minus 2 and plus or minus 3, written in the solution set right there. That's what u substitution looks like. It really, really hinges on you choosing. Uh, two, two things you have to get used to are choosing u well and also... Um, and also back substituting uh, at this step right here. The, the middle part is uh, kind of manageable because we've been spending a lot of time figuring out how to do that. Okay, so here, 
I see exponent of x squared and x to the fourth. Uh, the hint really is the one exponent is going to be double the other exponent, and it's going to be a trinomial. So here we see that this this exponent, the, the first exponent is double of the middle one. It's a, it's a trinomial. It has three terms. So that that's kind of an indicator that u substitution is going to be, work well. And, what, and then what is u going to equal? It's going to be whatever this term is right here. Uh, it's x squared. Then, of course, if you square it, you get u squared is equal to u to the fourth. And I can substitute this entire equation and turn it into u's with manageable exponents. u squared minus 26u plus 25. What two numbers multiply up to 25 and add up to minus 26? That would be minus 25 and minus 1. Set them both uh, equal to 0, and you get u is equal to 25, or u is equal to 1. Now back substitute. This is the this is again a new thing. Instead of we can't just end on a u. We started with x's, gotta end with x's. So u is equal to twenty-five turns into x squared is equal to twenty-five, because as we wrote here, u is equal to x squared. And then um, and then take the square root of both sides, you get x equals plus or minus five. Same thing over here. U is equal to x squared. We wrote that up here. We made sure to write it up here. It's good for us to write it up there. And then take the square root of both sides. We get x equals plus or minus 1. So solving this, we've written all four solutions down here in the solution set. Plus or minus 5, plus or minus 1. Oh, wow. Now we've got a GCF also. So instead of uh, writing it with parentheses, I'm just going to divide 8 from all all three terms on this side and, all, and the term over this side. So all the terms on both sides divided by 8, we write, we write as the as simpler lower version of 2x to the 4th plus 3x squared minus 5 equals 0. Okay, so then we've got, um, oh, I see that this exponent here is double this exponent, so I'm going to use u substitution. I'm going to choose this x squared to be u, u equals x squared, and u squared is going to equal x to the fourth. And therefore, writing it as u's, I've got something that looks like chapter 3. I can use um, split the middle on this one. I notice there's a 2 here, so 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. I'm going to list out all the factor pairs of negative 10. Here they are. These are all the numbers that multiply up to negative 10. And i got to choose the one that also adds up to positive 3, which is right here, negative 2 and 5. So 3u turns into minus 2 plus 5u. And then we can uh, we can continue to split the middle technique by finding the greatest common factor of these two terms, which is 2u, and then the leftovers are u minus 1. Um, so factor out of 5, we get 5 here, and then u minus 1 again. Yay, split the middle is going to work because we got confirmation that it's, that, it's, that it's working well because u minus 1 gets written twice. I'll write it once here, and then the leftovers from that are going to be 2u plus 5. I'll write them here. All right, keep going. And then we can see u minus 1 is, is here. u minus 1 is equal to 0. And then uh, two, 2u plus 5 is equal to 0 here. We're just splitting this up because they're both equal to 0. U, that means u equals 1 or u equals negative 2.5. Great. So then we keep on going. Take this, uh, we back substitute. We, we started with x's, got to end with x's. So u turns into x squared on both, both parts of the equation. We take the square root of both sides, and we get x is equal to plus or minus 1. We get x is equal to plus or minus i root 25, which is approximately using a calculator plus or minus 1.58i. And that's what I'm going to write here. Wow, that's a, that's a lot. That's a beast of a problem. That's okay. Let's keep going. All right. So, oh, I'm noticing the greatest common factor here. They're all even, so I'm going to divide them all, all the terms on both sides, by 2. Because it's an equation, I can. I can. I don't have to write the greatest common factor out in a set of parentheses. I'll just divide them all by 2, including the right-hand side, and get an equivalent equation. I'm noticing that this exponent is double this exponent, and it's a, it's a trinomial. So I think I can use u substitution. So we get u, very similar, u equals x squared, u, u squared is equal to x to the fourth. So now this is written as 2u squared minus 7u plus 6. I notice that I can use split the middle. 2 times 6 is 12. Factor pairs of 12 look like this. And i got to pick the one that also adds up to minus 7. That would be negative 3 and negative 4. Check. All right, let's split that middle. we got minus 7u turns into minus 3u and minus 4u here. The greatest common factor of 2u squared minus 3u is u. So put it over here in the front, and uh, then 
what times, let's see, 2u squared divided by u is 2u. Uh, minus 3u divided by u is much as minus 3. And then um, the greatest common factor here, I'm going to choose to be minus 2, because if I do that, I get 2u minus 3 again. Um, minus 4u divided by minus 2 is just 2u. Uh, 6 divided by minus 2 is going to be minus 3 equals 0. And so now I've got 2u minus 3 twice. I'll write it once here, and the leftovers go right there. Equals 0. Then I'm going to split it up and get 2u minus 3 equals 0, or u minus 2 is equal to 0. And solving both of these individually, you get u is equal to 1.5, or u equals 2. And then uh, back substituting, because we started with x, can't, and got to end with x, u is equal to, u uh, gets back substituted with as x squared, and we have this. And then take the square root of both sides, you get plus or minus the square root of 1.5. That's with a calculator. The square root of 2 is approximately um, 1.41. So there's four solutions, and there they are. Wow. All right. Uh, okay, ooh, it's a little scary because I see that 6, and that's a bit new to me. But never fear. This happens to be x, x to the 6 just happens to be double of x cubed. It's a trinomial, so I think u substitution is going to work. u is equal to x cubed. u squared will be equal to x to the 6. So therefore, when we substitute this, uh, this in, we, this x to the 6 gets replaced with u squared. This 7x cubed gets replaced with 7u, and, then, and everything else is cool. And then we're going to use split-the-middle technique again. Um, what two numbers multiply up to minus 8 and add up to uh, positive 7? That'd be plus 8 and minus 1. Splitting those into two different equations you can solve, you eventually get u is equal to minus 8, or u equals positive 1. Taking the square root of both sides, we get... Oh, no, sorry, not taking the square root of both sides yet. We have to back substitute, because if we started with the x's, we've got to end with the x's, not with u's. So then u, u becomes x squared equals minus 8, or x squared equals plus 1. This is a little more straightforward over here, taking the square root of both sides, we get plus or minus 1. But over here, because it's subtract uh, negative 8, then it's um, going to be i out in front, plus or minus i root 8. And the square root of 8 turns into 2 root 2. So this is going to be plus or minus 2i square root 2, plus or minus 1. <sighs> wow. All right. All right. Oh my goodness, fractions in the exponents, Berg. You got to be kidding me. No, we can do this. We can handle it. But just breathe. Into the nose. Uh, out through the mouth. Okay, we got this. All right. So, three. Okay, so there's three terms. That's a good indicator. And look, this exponent is double the middle exponent. So, I think we can use uh, we can use use substitution. Choosing u is going to be super tricky because it's fractions, but it's always going to be this term right here, x to the 1 fourth. If u is equal to x to the 1 fourth and you square both sides, that means 1 fourth times 2 is, or 1 fourth doubled is 1 half. So u squared is this. It goes right here and minus 8u. Wow, I'm so glad I don't have to solve an equation that has fractions in it anymore. u substitution really saved me. Thank you, u substitution. Um, and uh, while I'm thanking uh, entities right now, <laughs> I might as well thank the Franklin Institute for um, being my absolute favorite children's museum in Philadelphia. I, I went to it as a kid, and I'm, I'm now going to it as a, as a grown-up, and I'm so happy to have my membership to Franklin Institute. Have you been there? Why don't you let me know? Have you gone through the giant heart? Lots of fun. All right. That was your audio check. Now we're going to keep on going. So... Now that we've written it as u squared minus 8u plus 15, we have to ask ourselves what two numbers multiply up to 15 and also add up to minus 8. That's minus 3 and minus 5. Split them up, solve them, and then we get u is equal to 3 or u equals 5. Yay, we're done, Mr. Bergman. I'm so happy I found the answer. I'm going to type this in. Al no! No. you got to make sure you start with x. you got to end with x. Finish it. All right, so we got u is equal to x squared, u is equal to x squared, and so therefore, substitute and, get, and take the square root of both sides. And we get 
All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. I just I recognized another error that I made because u is not equal to x squared as it has been before. u is actually equal to x to the 1 fourth. I'm so glad I wrote it up there. That's how I caught my mistake. Yeah, Bergman, go. All right. Good job taking your own advice. u is equal to x to the 1 fourth. I wrote it down here. So now I'm going to back substitute, and this is actually x to the 1 fourth is equal to 3, or x to the 1 fourth is equal to 5. You may you may be like, how am I going to solve that? Okay, so let's breathe for a second and just remember that um, if you if if it were to the one half, like anything to the one half is the same thing as a square root. So this is the same thing as uh, a fourth root. And how you undo that is you raise it to the fourth power. If we raise both sides of these equations to the the power of four, it'll cancel out this fraction fractional exponent. So we're going to raise both sides to the fourth power. Uh, x to the 1 fourth raised to the fourth power is x. 3 raised to the fourth power, that's 3 times itself 4 times, is 81. Uh, x to the 1 fourth times itself 4 times is x, and 5 times itself 4 times is 625. And that's why the answer is actually 81, 625. My apologies if you wrote down the other stuff before I changed it, uh, but there it is. Uh, all right. Wow, we got a lot going on here. There is a set of parentheses, and there is a raised to the fourth power and raised to the square root. Oh my goodness. Well, one thing you could do if you wanted to is you could like multiply this out four times, like a plus three times itself four times, use a whole bunch of box methods, and just and then um, and then combine that with getting rid of the parentheses here and all these terms and multiply by minus two. But it's actually, u substitution is going to be way simpler here because we're going to choose this well. What I've noticed is that this exponent is double this, and it is still a trinomial. There's actually three terms. So I'm going to let u is equal to everything that's right here. u will equal a plus 3 squared. I'm going to choose this well, and if I do, then u squared is also present over here. So choosing the u substitution well, it actually simplifies things quite a bit. This is u squared. This is u squared right here, minus 2 times u minus 2 times u, minus 8 equals 0, minus 8 equals 0. Great. Okay, so solving this is going to be way easier because I chose it well. Uh, this becomes what minus 8, what two numbers times itself are minus 8, and also add up to uh, minus 2. That's going to be minus 4 and plus 2. So u minus 4 and u plus 2 is equal to 0. Split them up and solve them. You get u is equal to 4, u equals minus 2. And we are not finished. Uh, you might know what u is, but you don't know what x is or a is. And we've got to start with a. We've got to end with a. So we're going to back substitute. I'm so glad I wrote this u equals a plus 3 squared because now I know how, how to proceed. u turns into a plus 3 squared is equal to 4, or a plus 3 squared is equal to minus 2. Take the square root of both sides. We uh, The square root of 4 is plus or minus 2. The square root of minus 2 is plus or minus i root 2 because it's negative here. And of course, we're left with a plus 3. That the exponents are, had been undone by the square roots. Subtracting 3 from both sides, we get this, and we get this, and we write it twice. Because minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1, and minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5. So here are the two solutions from the first part, and here are the two solutions from the second part here. All right, let's keep going. Square roots? What? Okay. All right. All right, Bergman. I didn't sign up for square roots. It's okay. We can do this. What I notice is that it's a trinomial, and the exponent is double over here. The first, This first exponent is actually a... a the exponent is 1, and the, this exponent over here is 1 half. So the 1 is double 1 half. And so we can use it. So u is equal to square root of 3x. That's what this over here is. And when you square both sides, you get u squared is equal to 3x. Now 3x and 6x are not exactly the same, but if I'm going to substitute, if you double this, you get uh, 6x, and so 2u squared is here from the 6x. Minus 11 times all that messiness right here, plus 12. Oh look, quadratic. Fun, la la la, we can actually split the middle. Thanks, u substitution, you made this a whole lot easier. Um, plus 12 plus 12, um, you're looking for, oh, um, 2 times 12 is 24. And so I write out the factor pairs of 24, which of these also add up to minus 11? Well, not positive 3 and 8, but minus, uh, negative 3 and negative 8. So I'm going to rewrite this as 
2u squared minus 3u minus 8u, and then bring along the plus 12 equals u for the ride. Now that I've split up the middle, I can factor out the u from both sides, uh, from both terms. So you get u as you go to 2u minus 3, and then minus 4 times 2u minus 3. Huzzah! We've got 2u minus 3 written twice. We can do this. So then uh, we'll write it once here, and the leftovers go here. And then 2u minus 3 equals 0, or u minus 4 is equal to 0. Solving for u, we get u is equal to 3 halves, and u equals 4. And high five, Bergen, we're done! Yes! No! We are not done. Because we started with x, we've got to finish this thing with x. Let's go. All right, so we're going to substitute u for what is... I'm so glad I wrote this up here. U is, how do we figure out what to do next? Well, you just write... You look up here, and so u is equal to 3 square root of 3x. So square root of 3x is equal to 3 halves, and square root of 3x is equal to 4. How do you undo a square root? You square both sides. You multiply both sides by each other. Um, yeah, you, you raise both sides to the second power. That will undo the square root, and that will 3 halves times itself is 9 fourths. Undoing the square root, and 4 times itself is 16. Where you're raising both sides to the second power. Then, of course, divide both sides by 3, and you get your answer. There it is. One last one. Oh my goodness. What is this? We've got variables in the exponents? I've never seen that, Berg. I'm, I'm scared. I want to run home to my mom. No, it's okay. We can do this. Because what I've noticed is that this is a perfect square. This is a trinomial. And uh, and the exponent is double the other exponent. The two. Is, if you take this and double it, you get this. <sighs> okay. Thanks, you, you substitution. You're going to make this a lot simpler. So, uh, choosing u well, we're going to say u is equal to x to the nth. And so that was what this is. And if you square it, u squared would be x, uh, you know, x to the nth. Uh, n, n doubled is 2n. So x to the nth times itself is x to the two, n plus n, which is 2n. So therefore, we can say that this is this is going to disappear, the, the variable is going to disappear, and it's just, instead of x to the 2n, it's just going to be u squared, 36u squared, minus, not 12, not 12x to the nth, but 12u plus 1. Ah, no more variables in the exponent. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing this is a perfect square trinomial, and this is, uh, because we've got, this is a perfect square, and this is a perfect square, and this is uh, double. If we choose a to be 6u, uh, because 36, the square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of u squared is u, and the square root of 1 is 1, then a equals 6u, b equals 1. We're going to write a minus b squared, because it used to be a squared minus 2ab plus b. Okay, so then we got 6u minus 1 squared. We start with x's, and we got to end with x's, so I'm going to back substitute. Um, I need to know what u is. u is equal to x to the n. So instead of writing it at, with a u, I'm going to write it with an x to the n here. This is 6x to the n minus, and I'm going to let you figure out what that is there. Thanks for paying attention for the past 23 minutes. It's been real. Uh, bring your questions to class, and I'll see you there.